First up, we have DXN Limited, ASX code DXN. The company designs, engineers, manufactures, maintains, and operates data centers. Presenting for the company today is Shalini LaGruta, CEO and Managing Director. Shalini, thank you for your time. Over to you. Thank you for having me, Abby. Appreciate it. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Shalini LaGruta. Um, could I please go to the next slide there? Um, DXN Limited, we're a ASX listed manufacturer of prefabricated modular data centers. Um, so I became a CEO just slightly over two years ago um, into the business. Um, and the focus for me when I first came on uh, essentially was a restructure of and the turnaround of the company, um, cleaning up the balance sheet and refocusing the business on uh, effectively the growth aspect of our business, the prefabricated modular data center division, um, and as well as um, operating of operations of small regional data centers. Um, so there's two parts to our business, which I will go into slightly later. Uh, we were established in 2016, listed in 20, 2018. Um, we're a small a team um, distributed across multiple jurisdictions. I'm based in Sydney. We've got a manufacturing plant in Perth in Western Australia. We've got an engineering team in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, and um, we've got uh, uh, three other uh, board members, non-executive board members listed um, as part of the board. Um, essentially, we design, build and own um, as well as operate our modular data centers uh, to global best practices uh, in a highly secure environment. Um, if you're going to go to the next slide there, Abby. Um, so there's two parts to our business. One is we manufacture modular data centers. And what that means is we prefabricate them in our factory for our global customers. So we've got regional customers, we've got um, Australian customers, which in various market segments, but we've also got uh, international customers as well. Um, our first uh, and currently only manufacturing uh, plant is in Western Australia, uh, in Welshpool. We maintain full control of manufacturing from start to finish. So it is uh, fully designed uh, by us uh, together in conjunction with our customers. Um, our engineering team effectively works on a, a highly um, a spec standard for multiple customers. So, and I'm talking about global internet companies, subsea companies, uh, telecom companies, as well as mining. Um, we engineer that and we develop the blueprint for the build manufacturing. We then put all of that together in our factory um, including right up to factory acceptance. So the customer comes to us, uh, tests uh, and, and completes the checklist of factory acceptance before it's shipped to site. So it um, condenses the entire uh, time frame of actually deploying these modular data centers uh, to site and solves uh, many different problems that customers face um, as far as deploying the data centers are concerned. So that's one part of our business um, in our FY24 results, um, around 80, 75, 80% of our revenues were from modular data centers. Um, we've also got the other part of our business where we own and operate data centers, edge data centers, ones in um, Darwin. Um, we've got a 75 rack facility there, and we've got another one in Hobart in Tasmania with 35 racks. Um, most of our customers in these in these two regional data center sites are government, telco, we've got subsea operators as well, and they're all on long-term contracts. Um, revenues are summarized in some of the later slides as well. Um, next slide. Um, so just back to where we see quite a bit of growth coming in uh, into the business. So um, a lot of what I've been focusing on as as a and the company has been focusing on over the last few years is to um, focus our uh, focus our business around the cleanup of um, the balance sheet. We've been doing that. We've just completed a capital raise uh, last week, um, and as part of uh, of our uh, use of funds going forward, we are focusing on new products going into the modular data center business. Um, we have a an advantage in this space. Um, we are able to uh, design and deploy in a very quick way with relatively lower investment. When I mean lower investment, they're not necessarily cheaper on a dollar per kilowatt basis when you build it, but 
uh, in order for us to deploy quickly uh, while the site is being prepared and the manufacturing is ongoing in the factory, there is a huge advantage in a world where um, resources and um, highly um, highly technical staff are available. Um, this shortens delivery time frame, which is a massive thing for a lot of a lot of our customers. Um, it 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 um, so that is one of our advantage um, in terms of. Um, in terms of you know end users, there is um, quite a lot of requirements for uh, on-site, on-prem deployment. So, uh, for example, you've got mining customers, you've got cable landing stations. Not not everything has to be in the cloud. There is a, a growing requirement for edge data center deployments, on-prem, on-site requirements. And what we do is we solve that problem for these customers who are deploying on on-prem, on-site. Um, next slide. Um, a very um, high level summary here around our data center uh, overview. Um, and just for anybody who wants to sort of refer to any of these deck, uh, if you've not already seen it, um, this this was announced in our capital raise deck um, user funds um, last week on the, to the ASX. It can be actually downloaded from there as well. Um, we did uh, in FY24, we did um, 12.4 million in in um, modular in contracted sales for modular for the modular business. Of that, 8.2 was recognised as revenue. Um, and it is important to remember how we actually recognise revenue. We do, do it through double ASP 16. So as we build and as we hit the milestones for customer builds and customer requirement, we start recognising the revenue. Um, what the other thing to highlight here is uh, we've had consistent growth of modular data center requirements. Um, in the past, when I first started the company, when you know we were trying to clean up some of the um, some of the requirements around balance sheet, we were focused on smaller deals between sort of half a million to two million dollar deals. Um, we signed our very first uh, largest deal um, that we've ever signed um, at six and a half million earlier this year, and um, because we're um, moving into that sort of space where we can fund some of these bigger projects, we are going into that larger and larger type module deals, um, as you can see. Um, we've got work in hand from FY24, contracted sales, so basically business that we've already, uh, contracts we've already signed, an ongoing build that's coming into FY24, totaling 8.9 million, while we've we've already closed one and a half million in, in new orders uh, in FY25. Um, We've actually announced to the market that uh, we've provided a guidance of 16 million revenue for FY25, um, of which, um, you know, the 8.9 is backlog already. Um, I think it's also just um, one point to highlight is to date, we have deployed over 80 modules uh, globally, and, um, and this is all over the world, of which 21 was deployed in FY24. Um, next slide, Abby. Um, this slide is, I think, quite interesting. It sort of gives people a idea of where we currently operate and where we are headed to. Um, and some of the use of funds that we had as part of our capital raise at the end of last, um, at the end of last, the week before last. Um, so the first three quadrants on the top there, that's cable landing stations, mining and edge data centers. That's what we do currently. Um, there are existing contracts that we deploy. We've historically had a lot of um, requirements for this. This continues to grow. It is really important to remember that the cable landing station opportunities, even edge data center opportunities are continuing to grow in size. The pie is getting bigger. Um, just specifically on the cable landing station options, um, and requirements, we are starting to see um, a lot of growth in multiple cables that are being built across um, Australia, connecting into Australia, but also Asia Pacific, where we sell into. Um, we've deployed recently to Timor Leste, an international cable landing station built in the factory and shipped to site. So the pictures you see there are actual deployments of our modular data centers that's prefabricated fully the way you see it in the factory for it shipped to site. Um, and the opportunities that you're starting to see, for example, in landing stations, they go from one single module at 30 kilowatts right up to multi-megawatts of it. It could be one to two megawatts type sizes all the way to, and that would be uh, sort of, you know, 20, 25 modules uh, into one larger space. That's the type of um, opportunity there is for us to leverage um, with the right sort of balance sheet that we have. Um, Mining is ongoing. That continues to be a requirement for um, additional 
um, on-prem resources um, and automation in mining sites. And my, by mining, I mean um, gold mining. Um, so, you know, all of our, a lot of our customers include Rio, BHP. Um, we've got uh, Pilbara Minerals, Anglo-American. They're all customers, um, existing customers. Um, edge data centers. Um, that's an existing market segment, and that is essentially a lot of different customers who are actually uh, building co-location uh, space. And, and this is on the edge side, so b between 50 to 2 megawatt type sizes. That's a sweet spot for us. That's an existing market segment as well. Um, the bottom three are where we see quite a bit of growth in new market segments. And I think with data centers, it's a dynamic industry. Every single day we learn something new and new applications. Um, we have uh, interesting options, lots of uh, interesting requests globally coming in for inference AI sites. And if the, for those of you who are familiar with uh, artificial intelligence, you've got training sites, you've got inference sites. If you're talking about between one to two megawatt type HPC direct to chip cooling uh, solutions. DXN's value is we can actually prefabricate that in the factory, work with all the different suppliers that do uh, directed chip cooling, um, whether it's high density racks, and these are sort of 100, 120 kilowatts per rack. It's 10x power in comparison to what a regular edge data center would be. That's what we can be actually putting together. So in our um, use of funds uh, capital raise that we have just completed, um, this is a focus for us um, into FY25. Um, defense and portable data centers is also a new market segment for us. There is a big focus on that going forward. Um, DXN is a, a sovereign Australian um, listed company, and we're well positioned with the Australian government and the partnership um, that Australia has with the Five Eyes uh, and AUKUS as well. Um, and the final sort of market segment that we focus on is uh, indoor solutions. And these are sort of for one of a better terminology, they are Lego blocks that we actually prefabricate in a factory that are deployed into a data center um, and built as and when they need it uh, into a structure that um, uh, that is compliant to a lot of customers' requirements for hi um, hyperscale customers like Amazon, Microsoft, etc. So these are the sort of market segments that we focus on um, in a nutshell. Next slide, please. Um, very quickly, here is a list of um, some of our existing customers um, in, in, in all the different market segments and they're continuing to grow. Um, uh, we have uh, customers in the global internet company space as well. Uh, we have enhanced NDAs with a lot of them, so we don't name them. Um, uh, and some of the some of the requirements around, for example, cable landing stations. Um, and this is, uh, if you go into sort of um, a website uh, called Submarine Cable Map, uh, which is uh, by Telegeography, you will actually see a lot of the different cables that are being um, installed that already exists, but also being planned over the next 10 years. Um, and our position in that is quite strong because we've already supplied quite a lot of uh, global internet, global companies for the cable landing station market segment. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I think in a nutshell, you really, um, the point here is there is continued industry demand. Uh, DX is well positioned because of our focus into the modular data center space, prefabrication design. Um, I think where uh, the capability comes from uh, and the differentiation that we have in the market is that we deal directly with the end customer. Uh, and this is whether it's global internet companies or mining companies. We understand their requirements. We solve the engineering issue um, rather than having engineering resources in-house, especially at the edge of the network. Um, we provide them that engineering arm that solves a problem plus uh, offers a product at the same time. And so that enables us to enter global internet companies and, and um, sort of blue chip companies that uh, a lot of other companies would not be able to, thereby um, um, availing us the, the resources and the know-how to be able to design a solution that we can actually build and deliver. Um, and I think it is also, um, you know, uh, a testament to the team's efforts, despite, you know, some of the difficulty in the initial stages of DXN's listing, we have consistent, we have been very consistent in the modular manufacturing part of the business. We've always made money on these deals um, and we've deployed over 80 to date, positioning us well for the future.
Um, next slide. Um, I wanted to sort of uh, highlight a little bit here around the opportunities we have on our existing market segment, the cable landing station industry um, se market segment. This is subsea industry. Um, we've done over uh, 80 modules to date globally, but um, in terms of uh, landing stations in the APAC region, there is a lot of new cables that are being built today, and we're well positioned to, su to, to support a lot of that. Um, in, in terms of what global internet companies are doing, and especially with requirements uh, now coming through with AI, um, what we're starting to see is there's a lot more landings, there's a lot more cables actually being built, there's additional spurs, uh, and so we're quite excited about this particular market segment ourselves. Uh, next slide. Um, this is our FY24 high, uh, highlights that we uh, issued to the market a few weeks ago. Um, in terms of group revenue, we did uh, 10.8 million for both the modules and the data center business uh, with our very first EBITDA positive result um, in, in our history, uh, turning a, a testament to the team for the turnaround of the business. Uh, and um, in terms of what we have done uh, into modules and, and data centers is provided as a split there. Um, very quickly on the outlook, we've actually uh, provided a guidance of 16 million with positive EBITDA anticipated for FY24. Next slide. Um, we've got a strong board that is uh, behind me uh, as um, Leila has come in and she's uh, technically no longer interim C CFO. Uh, she's permanent CFO and will also be taking on the COO um, role in the company. Um, uh, Abby is our uh, uh, chair and non-exec director. Um, she has uh, plenty of ASX experience. Uh, she came on earlier this year and she's given us uh, a level of um, professionalism around our reporting, which is which I value. Um, Dr. Mio On is a uh, tech entrepreneur. Um, he himself is listing a company, an ASX 500 company, um, and um, a strong um, venture capitalist, very well known in the um, US and subsea cable markets. Um, and um, and, and he brings um, a lot of contacts and, and relationships um, and support uh, to me and the team. Uh, Brendan has been on the board for a couple of years now, he provides that consistency. Um, and um, and together with this um, sort of new, relatively two of our new, new directors and our existing team that we've got, we're well positioned for growth. Um, I think that's the last slide there, Abby. Um, yeah, we've got one more slide. It's just on a high level, we're a listed company specializing in prefabricated modular data centers. We're well positioned for a lot of growth that's coming in for data infrastructure. Uh, Australian, um, you know, uniquely Australian um, ASX, um, ASX listed, well positioned for a lot of sovereign requirements. Um, we have done uh, quite a lot of de deployments, both locally and internationally. Um, and um, yeah, we've also done quite a bit of work now in the restructure of the company, including our existing debt facility in the latest capital raise as well. Thank you, Shalini. So I do have a lot of questions coming through. If you have the time to answer a few, that would be great. Yeah, no problem. First off, so what's the GM percentage for modular manufacturing now? Noting FY23, it seemed to be around 35%. And October 23, the company was targeting initial 15% improvement in the near future. Um, yeah, so I'll answer the first part, October 23. Um, so I think overall, what our focus is growth. Um, we maintain a minimum margin on any deal. So our man modular manufacturing has always been consistently above 35% gross margins and uh, net margins is subject to our operational growth, our operational costs at any given um, half as well. Um, I think as we go into FY25, the intention is to maintain our EBITDA positive position. And, um, but at the same time, bearing in mind that we are going from sort of, you know, half a million to $1 million deals to now three to $6 million deals, we want to continue taking on larger, larger deals. Uh, and in that, uh, with that, you know, our manufacturing and our operational costs will increase. I hope that answers the question. Thank you. All good. So what's the current annual production capacity of the Perth facility? 
at what annual sales level does the company need to sustainably, sorry, substantially expand the facility? Yeah. So um, when I first started in the company, uh, we were building five or six per year. Um, we are now doing between sort of 25 and 30 per year. Um, and I think it was a, a case of us winning these deals and restructuring the team and restructuring this existing space that we've got to replicate um, and build at speed and at, at maintaining the quality. So a lot of work has gone into ensuring that we can build and, and improve our production. Um, in terms of existing facility, uh, we can double we can be, we can essentially double what we've got today. So between 25 and 30, we can go up to 50 per year, subject to, I've got to put a caveat there, subject to standardization of design. Um, if they're all 50 are bespoke, then you know we're going to have uh, capacity limitations. Um, one of the things that my um, uh, the board's focus, as far as my targets personally as CEO and managing director is concerned, is to be able to replicate what we build um, across Australia. And there are many ways we can do it without actually acquiring another site. Um, we have had multiple deals in the past where we needed to build, you know, between eight and 10 modules within a short time frame. And we, re we, we replicate the low um, IP components uh, externally and do all the high IP, including factory acceptance and fit out internally. So there's, there's a, there's a big fluctuation in what we can actually build even with the current capacity. But I think what will drive new capacity for, for us and make it, you know, it's an easy decision is, for example, a breakthrough in defense means, you know, an East Coast or, you know, sort of regional New South Wales supported by government is a very easy decision from there on. Um, we will always consider new facilities subject to um, receiving uh, annual, you know, recurring uh, orders from customers, from major customers. That's, that's a thinking. Thank you, Shalini. So to target bigger modular sales contracts, will the sales cycle be a lot longer than previous experience and how is the pipeline building for that those kind of deals? Yeah, so um, yes, I would say bigger sales contracts means longer, but I, I think it is important to remember the value proposition of the modular data center versus a brick and mortar solution is always speed. So the compelling reason people come to us in the first place is because they need to get something up and running within 12 months of them contacting us or um, understanding that this is possible. Um, whereas, you know, if they're going to go down the path of brick and mortar and acquiring 20 different trades to a site, wherever in the world it is, um, they would plan around two to three years of a build. And 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 I'm talking about edge data centers, so anything between sort of 50 kilowatts to two megawatts. I'm not talking about 100 megawatts, 200 megawatts, which is the cloud or the, the uh, AI factories that global, uh, that um, hyperscalers like NextDC or Equinix is building. That's a completely different um, build. We are talking about all of the other data centers that is that, that needs to fill the ecosystem. So, um, it won't increase much is the point because there is always a compelling need for it to be deployed fairly quickly. And then can you speak to um, tenders you have currently ongoing and what is the size of this pipeline today versus year on year? Who are your biggest competitors when you are tendering? Sure. So um, we are focusing on the sort of um, we'll never say no to the one to two million dollar contracts. Of course, we've always had them. Um, they fill the pipeline, and um, you know more and more in the data center industry, we're starting to see the larger and larger deals. Um, and it's also important to remember that with AI coming on, a lot of the deals become more power and cooling centric, which means for one module, your contract size goes up significantly by you know five x because of power and cooling prices, uh, which is significantly bigger. So I think um, depending on the market segment with landing stations, uh, we see anything between one to two million, right up to 10 million taller deals. Um, but in the AI market segment, we see anything between five and 10 million. Um, and I think in in terms of opportunities, um, they're, they're 
you know, in terms of mining, I think it's it's quite standardized. There's, there's a standard product that's out there, and um, and it's it'll always be in the sort of one to two million sort of contracts um, because you're talking about on-prem site. That's the difference. Um, edge data centers. How long is a piece of string? If they want to build ten megawatts, then it's a dollar per kilowatt times ten megawatts. Um, so if we think of um, who the com competitors are, again, it's subject to the market segments. Um, we we don't sort of compete on the 50 to 100 megawatt type. We don't even look at 20 megawatts a lot of times. Um, we focus on the one to two megawatts when a customer has a requirement to develop and deploy quickly. Um, so in Australia, um, there are other companies that have solutions for the telco solution, telco market, for instance, they're more shelter fabricators. Um, our value proposition is because we can uh, build a specific data center solution in the subsea space. Uh, we've got know-how and engineering. We don't see a lot of competition in that in that space, uh, but most definitely, you know, a lot of our sometimes competitors um, that we might see are the biggest vendors in the world. They're billion-dollar companies, but more and more they're relying on a channel partnership. People like us, whom they can send power, sell power and cooling to yeah. that then fully system integrate a total solution and deploy to customers. Hope that makes sense. Thank you, Shalini. It does. Um, so is there any other takeover interest in DXN considering takeovers currently happening in the data center center industry? Yeah, there's a lot happening out there, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, we've had... Um, we've had interest in the past um there was a there was an attempted takeover for um in 2022 it was a um a 80 billion dollar um sort of private equity company that wanted the skills and know-how that we've got to build data centers across australia and across the asia pacific um look i think it's the nature of the industry um will um you know, the, the team continues to focus on business as usual. Um, you know, if there is the, the right interest and the right opportunity, of course, it's up to the board to decide and as and when, you know, the, any opportunities come along. Thank you, Shalini. And then the last question from me is, what can investors look for in the next six to 12 months? Um, so I think from our point of view, we've provided a guidance to market um, for FYI. 25. It's the first one we've ever done, as in the first guidance we've ever provided. Um, obviously, our focus is to, you know, with the recent capital raise that we did a couple of weeks ago, um, the focus is to double down um, on, on the use of funds that we've announced to the market. There's um, a bit of restructure going on. All all good things are happening, um, you know, to apply to, to, to the growing our business. Um, so I think the next 12 months is going to see quite a lot of changes in the industry as well. Um, you'll start seeing a lot of more, a lot more demand coming through for, I guess, you know, the periphery of the, of the data center network around edge data centers and AI applications. So we're super excited about the next 12 months um, um, as we have been over the last, you know, we've seen so much change over the last six months. Thank you, Shalini. So a very great presentation. You sound very busy. We'd love to get you on in the new year. There are a few questions in the Q&A box. If you could have a look at those and answer them, if you have the time, it would be greatly appreciated. But thanks again for your presentation and have a great weekend. Thanks, Abby.